Many knew him as the ultimate bridge builder. Rabbi Eckstein started the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews in 1983. Since then, it's generated more than one and a half billion dollars to help Jews in Israel, the former Soviet Union, and more than 58 other countries. In a video message taped shortly before his death, Eckstein charged his daughter, Yael, with the mantle of his ministry. Watch over this ministry. Feed it, cultivate it. Don't let anyone say it's not of God. Yael says her dad left a rich and prophetic work for her to lead. Yael says she's grateful for the many prayers helping her make the transition from grief to building on her father's legacy. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, here with me now is Yael Eckstein, and it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Gordon. Your father definitely left a legacy, and it's like you're standing on the shoulders of a giant. Uh, what, what are your plans now? How, how are you going to build on it? Well, I think we have to continue really um, focusing in on what is unique about the fellowship. What is our role? What is our mission? What is it that God is leading us to do? And I feel like the answer is um, that we are helping those who need help, just as the biblical scriptures tell us, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to shelter those who are homeless, the orphans, the widows, to be part of biblical prophecy coming to fruition, the ingathering of the nations, Aliyah, from over 37 countries that the fellowship does. That I, I look at it as really just clearly defining our niche, our strength that God is leading us to do now, and to work with partners who are doing other important work Work in the field of Jewish Christian relations, connecting Christians to Israel. And I look at myself really in this unique position that this concept that was once radical, that was once taboo, Christian standing with Israel, we've entered a new dawn that suddenly the Jewish people are interested and they're accepting this love. And, and I I am here on behalf of millions of Christians around the world in Korea, in America, in Canada, in Europe, to tell the Jewish people for the first time in history, we are not alone. And to pass that message on to the next generation as well. I think that's an untold story of the fellowship that uh, I think a lot of people view it, well, it's Christians in America, but no, you've, you've branched out worldwide. Um, and you mentioned Korea, uh, but you're, you're doing wonderful things in Hong Kong, Singapore, Philippines. I mean, you're reaching Africa, Brazil. You're, you're reaching these other countries, the, these other Christian populations. It's amazing to see really what God is doing. I believe when we are obedient to his word, he brings down blessings. And so when I look at the numbers of Christians that are rising across the world in China, 100 million Christians, 90% of South America identifies as Christian. I think this is because for the first time in history, we're actually doing what God wants. And so he's sending us blessings. But what I've realized is although we've come to a place in history because a lot of hard work of both of our fathers and many other great, great people. Um, we've come to a place that many people think being an evangelical Christian is synonymous with being pro-Israel, but that doesn't happen by chance. That happens because of investment, because of time, emotional, spiritual investment. And so when I look at these numbers of growing Christians across the world, many of them are new Christians, first generation Christians after coming out of communism, China. It's not like there's this rich heritage of, of what, what it means to be a Christian there. I look at it as our responsibility to, to feed them, to teach them. Christians say that they're grafted onto the rich olive tree of Israel, but what is that olive tree? And why is it so rich? And how can we work together to make sure that we are setting the foundation for a strong, spiritual, and tangible future moving forward, especially with all the shared risks that we face in the Middle East and around the world? I'll tell you an anecdote I learned from, from China. Um, uh, someone went in, it was, it was part of the house church movement and found out that they were staunchly pro-Israel. And so they asked, well, how? How did you get this? And the response from the elders was, well, that's what the Bible says. That simple. Um, no one had come in and taught them. They just looked at the scriptures and said, this, this is why. The, this is God's, God's work. What is the work of the fellowship doing to help the diplomatic standing of Israel? Because I think that's one of 
the untold stories as well. When you look at the influence, particularly some of the Muslim countries are trying to do at the UN, how can evangelicals around the world stand against that? Well, I think the first thing is knowledge. I believe that knowledge is power. And so often in mainstream media, what you get is the culmination of so many different things that are going on until it gets to breaking point. And then you think you're educated because you're watching the news or reading the news, but really you have no clue what's going on. So the first thing I think is that now because of um, amazing organizations like CBN, that Christians can actually stay educated on what's happening with Israel. And I think that's critical because every step of this journey is of God. Nothing happens by chance anywhere. And we're all just vessels being used by God to, to choose between either light or darkness and what we're going to bring into this world. But I think especially Especially today in Israel, God Himself is 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 working this out. And just just as Queen Esther and Mordechai said, God has His plans. You could be part of it, or you could not be part of it. But God's mm -hmm. going to make happen whatever's going to happen. And so I think it's an amazing time using technology that Christians around the world who have never stepped foot in Israel can know what's going on, can be in the rooms of those people in Sterot who are getting rocket attacks through technology, to be, you know, in the car with a mother who has four children in back and she has 15 seconds when that code red siren sounds to get to shelter and she has to decide which one of her children is she going to take or is she going to stay vulnerable there because she can't unbuckle each child and get to a bomb shelter in time. That that's news. There's just the headlines. You can't understand what's happening. You can understand the work that God is doing by looking at the details. And that's why at the fellowship, the details are so important. In so many ministries, you look at ROI as, you know, taking a young student who was raised in poverty and tracing them for 10 years to see till they become a doctor. And that's wonderful. But what I look at as ROI of the fellowship is how many Holocaust survivors can we feed? Did they get food? Well, then we had a good ROI. Well, then we're effective in our ministry. Yeah. You're a modern day Esther. I'll put that on you uh, for such a time as this. Esther fasted and prayed. How, how can people pray for you? What should they be praying for? Thank you, Gordon. I, the prayer that I say every morning is, Hashem sfatai tiftach ufiya Lord, open up my mouth so I can declare your praises. And so um, if the community will be so kind to continue praying for wisdom, for strength, for God's revealed blessings on me in my personal life and on the ministry, and that we can continue to see even more biblical prophecy come to fruition in the most peaceful, beautiful, inspiring way through the work of our hands. Amen and amen. And may you, you get that opportunity. If you want to learn more to, to, about the work, go to ifcj.org. And, you know, thanks for being with thanks us. Thanks, God bless you.